Hello fellow leggers, you are joining us in London at one of our most favourite venues, the Young Vic. Yeah, and we are seeing the sold out run, brand new production of Arthur Miller's Death of a Salesman. So stick around to hear all of our thoughts. Find out how many stars. Whether it's break a leg or leg it. So another Arthur Miller on this street. We've got all my sons playing just at the old Vic yep. with their all-star cast. And now we have another one. In fact, I think they're renaming the cut as Arthur Miller Way wow. just for this season. I make that up. But they could because they he's, could. he's they right could here. Do. And I think that goes to show how enduring his plays are and ultimately how successful they've been. The fact that there's two productions on the same street of two different plays. Yep. This production, Death of a Salesman, is co-directed by Marianne Elliott current Olivier Award holder for her revival of Company. Um, she, her, her shelf must be sagging with awards because she did catalog, Angels, Angels in America, America Curious into the Dog in the Night Time, yeah. all Olivier winning. So I'm very excited about that. She's directing it here with Miranda Cromwell who also worked with her on Angels in America so they've worked together before. Now if you don't know this is one of Arthur Miller's most critically acclaimed and most frequently produced works. We have seen this play before. Yeah, we've seen a production in the West End. Yeah, Didn't two years blow me ago. away. No, I've got to say, much from it, it was, I, I'm struggling to remember much about it, which I no. think says everything, really. Didn't work for us then, but I mean, company, we're open. Company didn't work for me before she got hands on it. Absolutely. So Let's there see you what go. Happens. Anyway, this 1949 play tells the story of a failing salesman as his family deal with the fallout of their patriarch on the verge of losing everything. Okay. Now, it's been um, reimagined, this production, as Marielle likes to do she likes to keep us on our toes right and it's now seen through the eyes of an african-american family a complete departure from previous staging and yep. it stars amongst others wendell pierce as willie loman he's best known for his work on the wire and suits i've never seen either of those no nope. Don't but, know but him at all. But they're popular, I know that. Yep. Um, as Linda Lohman, we've only got current Olivier Holder, Sharon D. Clark. Well, we know her. Yeah, she, she won most recently this year for Caroline or Change. Loved her work in the past. Can't wait to see what she does with this edit in the non-musical theatre role, actually. Yep. And also, we have Olivier Award nominee from this year as well, Arenzi Kenny. For his as work. As Biff Lohman. Yes. He did Misty. He was great as well. We've got a well. review for that too. So I think we've got a review for a lot of people that have been involved in the show, haven't we? In so some there's form a lot of potential another, here. Lots of potential. Now it's three hours long, including a 20 minute interval. So it's not a short play. And we'll be catching up with you in the 30 second breakdown to tell you what we think. And also stick around to the end to hear our thoughts on this production and find out how many stars. It's the interval, which means it is time for the Breaker Leggers 30, 30 second, second interval, interval breakdown. breakdown. So, what, what do, do you, you think so far? Me? Well, it's a tricky one actually. I think it's a bit like treacle. I feel like I'm wading through the plot somewhat. I mean, the characters are layered and I admire a lot about the production. But I'm going to see what the payoff is for this one. I'm holding judgement. What about you? Yes, I think it's a bit of a slow burner and um, some really intricate relationships forming, looking at um, two kind of realities and past and characters. So I'm intrigued. It's began to speed up in its pace come the end of the first half. So again, let's see what happens. We have come to the end of Death of a Salesman. I feel as if someone is like looking at me I know, directly. Like, Im imagine like face recognition would pick this up. <laughs> like if it was to separate us all out, it would think there were people here. But it's just us. It's just us. Um, we've come to the end of it. It's a bit mm. of an epic, a yeah. typical Arthur Miller. Mm -hmm. um, should we start with you? What are your thoughts on it? I I liked it, but I didn't love it. My God, is it another slow burner, but to the point of I fell asleep twice in Act 1. I was just not bothered, and I wasn't compelled or driven. Act 2, on the other hand, becomes something completely different. It was like all my sons in that respect. It all starts to come together by then, and it does drive and power through. It kept my attention fully in Act 2, but whatever about it that didn't in Act 1, I would have liked more of from Act 2 in Act 1, if you know what I mean. And I'm not sure what it is. I imagine it's the writing. Okay, I think that actually this is a really good piece. I think it's a real slow burner. Come the very end, 
I got it and I was like actually this is very layered a great story I think this production lends itself um, I think the one we, the, the piece the okay. one because this is the second time we've seen it and mm -hmm. a lot of moments I was actually like this is quite good it's just really good but I don't remember any of this but I've taken a lot from this production so I think a lot has to be said in the first instance to Marianne Ella Elliott and the co-directorship of uh, Miranda Cromwell. Miranda Gotta Cromwell. Gotta give me more warning if you're gonna pull out names because <laughs> um, I'm not ready. So I think what they've done to pull this production together in terms of lighting, in terms of music, those real quick changes, real stylized um, reflective moments going into the head of someone that is losing their mind, I thought that was done really really well. Um, the cast was great as well. I really liked it. Great. I, I didn't. Really liked it. I wouldn't. I wouldn't sit through this again, for example, in any production, much less this one. Um, yes, I like. I like the fact they've tried to do something with it, and there's cultural references to the fact that they are in that um, African American sort of culture. There's jazz. There's Billie Holiday style they get to music, sing. and it is. And that's this another is a clever thing. Cast. Yeah, another clever thing and from the director is they play to their strengths with regards to the the caliber of the cast they have and their ability to sing and but it, it's it not... becomes death of a salesman the musical at times and there are no. motifs of it but do you know what anything to, for me to disguise the fact that at one is just dull 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 for me i think it builds i'm um, going back to the music it's not like cell of jazz hands music it's very subtle and understated but they sing and together yeah, with layered harmony and yeah, choreographed so staging with movement it is there as a sort of there's a little kind of it's musical so nice. theater it straddles for me at times and the vo voices are just so good and i mean we so already full. know that because sharon d clark is a legend should we with talk the about sharon d clark now? then okay, as we're, as we're here that. okay so what did you think of Shandy Clark? I thought she was um, Caroline or Change. What did you think? She just does that role really well. Yeah, and exactly there are real the parallels to those. I was parts. expecting the boiler to start singing, the fridge to break out into song at one point. She sits basically in the basement, underneath a solo light, wearing exactly the same wig as she had in Caroline or Change. And most of the time, she seems to have that sort of a role. Now she plays it really well, but it didn't Shh. show me a great depth, like range of acting because I've seen it all this year in Sharon D. Clarke's performance. Um, I, I love her anyway. Yeah, I mean. she is great. She's yes. fantastic. And she gets a lovely monologue scene in this where she's with her two sons and she's trying to give them what is what. I think I think she's absolutely fantastic. Great. And again, great to hear her singing. She's got such a beautiful Yeah, it would be a waste if, you didn't, if you didn't shoehorn a number in which but they have. But it's not just about that. She's a great actress as yes, well. Yes, she is. Now, Wendell Pierce as Willie Loman, um, the leading man, and the sh he carries the show. You have to go on an emotional journey with him and you have to sympathize with the choices and decisions that he makes. Did I? I mean, I think it opened up a whole can of worms for me about people that struggle with, in, in nowadays, bearing in mind this play is, what, 60, 70 years old now, We people work on zero hours contracts, they don't know where their next shift is coming from, they don't know where their next pay packet is coming from, and that brings about this massive amount of stress when you're trying to carry a family unit, and I saw parallels with that in his production, which felt, in this performance, which felt very of now, as much as it would have done then. I think it's this is an epic of a part. Art. boy does he have a lot to learn he's pretty much on stage all the time mm -hmm. and he's in these different realities going on yeah and I think that there, there is something to be said about someone that is moving this is Arthur Miller's writing is fantastic somebody losing their mind is kind of one part of it but it's also going past their heyday I think there was a time when he was fantastic and he was the salesman all he knows is how to sell things he sells things to his family he wants his children to be bigger than they are he's invested in them and again it's that Arthur Miller thing of the children when they realize maybe world isn't like that mm. and my my parents aren't as great as i thought they were there was there is so much going on in terms there of the was layers a phrase playing into my head and that is that the society that we have built up where they, we have those mammoth expectations on ourselves and each other is a bull concept you know this sort of thing where you have to be like you have to be outstanding to be recognized it's not enough for you to just and yet be... that's everything we tell our children anyone yeah, who is a parent is unfair, you tell really, your child you tell your child you can you've be whatever be you want best, to be and you've if got to you be work outstanding hard for it, and yeah and we kind of think yeah we can and we think we put our parents on a pedestal it's a terrible and then we amount come of to pressure, that, pressure, that isn't we it? realization that actually the world is hard work yeah. it doesn't it, it is unfair it doesn't give us any 
everything. I think we also must mention the sons. We've got Martin's Himangbi, I hope I got that right, in the role of Happy Loman. Um, he was in Richard II at the Almeida, and this is a lot better than that. He was great. I thought that both of the, well, the whole cast thought was great, but yeah, I thought he was absolutely brilliant as yeah. well. The real kind of smoother. You can see the elements of his father, Willie Loman, in there being the real salesman, being able to charm any Bravado lady. Is what any comes lady. To mind there. Bravado. Yeah, and he really did turn it on and schmooze the ladies. Yeah. Really nicely played. Also, Arenze Kenny, I mean, as Biff Loman. Man, has that guy got physique. He's got it all. He has I've got, got it all. I'm jealous of the level of talent that that guy has. He absolutely he can blew write, me away he today. He can sing, he can act, and he looks stunning. You know when you sort of think, this is really unfair. Like, life has dealt me a really like crappy hand because this guy got it all. I think he got all of our shares. And you know what? I think what's great about him is we saw him in Misty, mm -hmm. which he wrote, and yep. he performed a one-man show pretty mm -hmm. much with two musicians. <laughs> And that character, what he did there, was completely different to what we saw yes, today. As was his and character in um, Girl from the North Country. <coughs> what really stands out is just his ability. His range, his guys. His characterization yeah. was so perfect today, yet so perfectly under... There were times when he could have gone too far mm -hmm. and gone beyond the character, but it was all there. His, he, his absolute desperation to mm -hmm. please his Do you know what's dad gonna happen in a way and just him? let his dad... He's let, gonna get. Go. He's gonna get on a big series. He's gonna get on like the Game of Thrones prequel, and he's gonna be sucked up by that sort of I TV see, film. I see. I agree. World. I don't think he will be could be long before we see him yeah, going so if off. Yeah. you get the chance to see him on stage, take it now. Do you know what? He's gonna be big. I will go Even a step bigger. further. Okay. I, and I don't think you can get any bigger than. A Breaker Legger 2019 nomination. No way, for Best Supporting Actor in a Play? For Best Supporting Actor in a Play to Arendze Kenny. As his role as Biff Lohman in Death of a Salesman. Absolutely. Wow. I'll go one step further and I say he'll get an Olivier Award nom for the same part. I, I think, okay. I'm going to call it now, you're guys. And I've, now? Got good, I've got a good record on this, I okay. really do. So you're saying 2020 yeah. will be... A, so that would be two years in a row up for a nomination. Yeah, I can see it happening. As I can see Sharon actually probably getting a nod as well. Um, I mean, we need to mention at least another woman, I think. Um, but they're just the, the female well, roles in this are pretty yeah, rubbish. Yeah, there isn't really, to be to, fair. But I mean, they, all of the cast were more than capable. I um, think probably writing of the time. You've I got liked, a strong female mother part in Sharon yeah. D. Clark, who's trying to keep things together. I loved Maggie in denial service. Of everything. Thought she was great. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> she was great. Yeah. Um, but Swap yeah, a lovely but supporting she was cast. Great. Has a good laugh on it, doesn't she? <laughs> she does. Does, does I, Maggie. And I think again, that mm -hmm. moment comes from a directorial vision. Okay. If you see it, so again, yep. Marion Elliott and the partnership there. I would talk about um, designer as well. It's nice to see Marianne not just running to Bunny Christie's arms, and she's actually working with Anna Fleishley, who she's worked with before, granted, or has she? <laughs> has she? Maybe she has. Maybe, Maybe she, she has. Let us know down below. <laughs> Let us but, know down below. But we've seen a lot of Anna's work. German Life, a very, very dark matter. Home, I'm darling. Um, everybody's bridge, talking about bridge, Jamie. National. She's done a lot of stuff. John Hon Juan in Soho, we've got Rose and Sanson Guildenstern. And I loved her work here. I thought the set was marvellous, actually. Yeah, really quite minimalistic. Um, She's nice. going to get an Olivier nom. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another one. Yeah. Here we go. I God. think she'll get an Olivier nom for best design. For Death of a Salesman here. Yep. You heard it first. Let's see what happens come 2020, Leggers. Yeah. Anything else we want to pull out? Carolyn Downing for sound designer because the music and the sound in this are pivotal, I would say, to this production. Okay. It hangs off the music. Okay. Yeah. I guess you're probably wondering how many stars we are going to give Death of a Salesman coming playing here at the Young Vic. We are going to give... Four. four stars for this and piece. And for me, very much only just a four star. Um, I, I appreciate that Marianne Elliott and, um, what was her name, sorry, Miranda, have found the music within this piece, quite literally. They've heard a song being sung within this piece. But for me, it's whistling the same old tune because it is a fairly tired text, I think. I think it's an absolute grower of a piece with so many complex issues 
it's showing so much, so much that I think you can resonate to. It really builds, there's some real strong dynamic scenes and some great performances. Loved the songs, loved the twist on the diversity play within the cast. So um, it gets my thumbs up. If anything, yeah. just a tiny bit slow at times, mm -hmm. but come the end, it's a complete- it's worth the payoff. It's a complete piece, yeah, come right. the end. Um, a couple of other things I want to say is the young, this is a sold out run, but the Young Vic are releasing, I believe, every Thursday. So tickets for the following week, a few and far between. Okay. I think this will transfer into town. It's a strong likelihood, but seeing it here in such an intimate venue is an absolute boon. So get to yes. see it if you can. Another thing, please check out our etiquette video about theatre etiquette. If you are using your phone after the performance has started, you are disrespecting not only the actors on stage, but every single audience member around you, and you're making yourself look like an idiot. Stop immediately. Also, I'm calling out to venues. Can I just say, you, you said that quite passionately, yeah. as if that's something you experienced today. Funnily is that enough, something maybe, that happened? Just maybe I did. And also, I'm calling out to venues to chill your drinks and stop offering ice in your plastic cups. Every time somebody spits it back into their cup, it is like someone is playing the maracas around the venue. I don't want to hear that when someone's having a breakdown about the death of their husband. Stop it, venues. There is no need for ice if you chill your drinks. Please stop offering it. I don't see the point. It's a distraction. Again, you're saying that as if that's something that happened today. Just something today. I'm quite passionate about, guys. Oh and I think, goodness. and what I was thinking when I was sitting in there is these sorts of things coming together are enough to put people off going to the theatre because it's not a nice experience. It's infuriating. You're going to drive your audiences away. Stop it. Just anyway, stop it. No, no more. No we'll, more. We'll get off our soap. But that's just what I think. And that's just what I think. Let us know what you think. Leave your comments down below. Subscribe. Yeah. Like. Share. Do the works. <laughs> We're the Break Leggers. And we'll catch you again soon. Bye! Bye.